Good morning, everybody. I'm starting early today because I have a lot of stuff to do. I am going to make um, smothered cabbage with pork. And this is ground sausage. I have the fire on high right now until it actually starts getting um, cooked some. So we're going to have to put some black pepper, as always. <laughs> As always, I love my roasted garlic and herb by Weber. Get that at Sam's for anybody that's new here. Granulated garlic, I also get that at Sam's. Those two things, the granulated garlic and the garlic and herb will stay out in the black pepper because I will be using that to um, add to the cabbage when I add the cabbage to the meat and I'll mix during a little while. So we're going to go ahead and cook this down. We're going to go ahead and get these two onions cut up. Alrighty, I'm fixing to chop my onions up, but I have a little container here of the paper part of the onion on the outside comment down below what you think I might be doing with that part of the onion all right onions chopped up and they're going in all right, I'm going to use two big spoons of minced garlic. This size, not real big. <laughs> it's about a tablespoon. And there's number two. Um, garlic makes this dish, guys. you got to use a lot of garlic and onions. All right, this is just to kind of show you all the difference. I got uh, meat day before yesterday. And it was on sale, but I was talking about on the sales ad, the pick five for $24.99. This was in my freezer. This is um, sliced ham that I use for flavoring and stuff. And it wasn't maybe six months ago that it was $19.99 for a pick five instead of $24.99. So, just wanted to share that with you. This is just like the bunch of sliced up ham. I'm going to use some of it for this and some of it I'm going to make a big pot of beans. Alright, so I've got my ham in there. I'm going to mix that up. I do, um, in the place of ham sometimes, I use pork chops. I cut the pork chop off the bone and put the pork chop in there and cut it all up. And I also use bacon. A lot of the times um, but since we had the ham we're not going to use the bacon but I do have some bacon grease stored so I'm going to put a little spoonful of that for flavor here is the bacon grease just a little bit for flavor all right we got that mixed up pretty good turn the fire up a little higher so I want them onions to get cooked down pretty good This is not a paid promotion in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to share. We got these uh, Kalina knives. I got them from my husband, a knife set, for Father's Day. He loves them. They're rugged looking. They're really awesome. They're heavy duty. Uh, full tang. This is the cover, you know, to keep you from getting cut. If you store it that way, this is a nice little case that they send with it if you want to put it on your belt loop. And then it comes packaged in this little box nicely like this. My hands are wet as I'm touching this little box. So, But this Kalina knife, buddy, let me tell you, they are really good knives. We love them. Um, we can go back. This will be something we can pass down to our grandchildren. 
um, great grandchildren. Hopefully, it'll go through many years of getting passed down through the family line. All right, just continue to cook it up. It's getting there. I like the onions, even though they're going to continue to cook when we throw the cabbage in there. I like them to be cooked down pretty good. Alright guys, I've done pulled off all the excess of the cabbage. I'm going to wash it on the outside before I cut it. After I cut it, I am going to wash it again. Doing this one handed, so forgive me. <laughs> and then this stuff here, I am going to cut up, and that's going to the critters. Like I said, we don't waste much around here. This is our compost. I have to cook this egg up. I had a cracked egg this morning. Um, so I have to cook that egg up for the kitties, puppies, whatever. Cook it up, throw it outside. I'm actually going to boil the banana. Um, I put onion peelings in there. I normally don't do that, but I did this morning. I'm going to boil the banana, and I'm going to um, boil the eggshells as well. And you'll see why on that later. <laughs> I don't show myself cutting up stuff a whole lot because most of the time I'm doing this one-handed. So I just kind of wanted y'all to see this knife in action. There's not a whole lot of strain and cabbage is not an easy thing. I mean it's easy to cut but you do have to use a little force because of the size and the thickness. So just wanted to kind of show y'all an idea with that particular knife. Um, can't wait because I want to buy my husband. They have a really knife, uh, nice knife block that is magnetic and it stands up and it's wooden and they also have a really nice apron meat slice and apron I really 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 want to get that for him um, preferably by Christmas time as I said we're gonna wash it again I have some of it in the colander and then some of it is in the sink but what's in the sink we're just gonna put in the colander and rinse it off real good all right, we have this colander full and this big gigantic bowl full of cabbage that's all been washed. Um, I know people, you know, are going to say, oh, you put stuff down in your sink. Yes, I do. It's stainless steel. I scrub it with bleach and Dawn dish detergent every day, several times a day because I use it so often. So it's just something handy live in a camper I don't have a whole lot of space so I have to optimize on every bit of usage of counter space sink space everything I have in order to be able to cook big meals like this in a camper all right how are we looking over here is perfect this is where I want it to be the onions we want to be translucent I like the edges of the meat a little brown it just adds so much flavor to the dish. Alright, we're at the next stage where we're going to add the cabbage and stuff to it. So, first thing I do is I have two cups of water that I'm going to put in there. That way the steam and stuff, the meat doesn't get more over brown and stuff because I'm going to be cooking the cabbage. I'm just piling the cabbage right on top and that way the moisture is in the bottom and it allows while the cabbage is cooking down it allows um, the meat to not get burnt. So we're just going to add our cabbage now. And I'm going to do it kind of in stages because this is the only pot I'm going to use. So I'm going to put as much as I can in here. Put the lid on it. Let it cook down and then add some more. Okay. 
All right, I added that whole big bowl of cabbage. This is not the exact lid, but it works. It will work just fine, just to help hold the moisture and the steam in until the cabbage cooks down some. All right, you know how I told y'all a minute ago I was going to use parts of the stuff that was in the compost pile or my little bucket that I do other things with is what I call it. Um, I took this part of the cabbage which is the core down at the bottom and the big leaves on the outside that's real um, soft and mushy and I took the egg shells from this morning that I used and I took the banana peeling and I did rinse the banana peeling it all, all off because that is store bought and you know I just want to make sure there's no pesticides or anything like that going back into my plants so I am going to boil this down and let the water sit I'll strain off the banana peels, the cabbage, and the eggshells, and then I'll use the water once it's cool to pour into my plants, just to give them a little bit of vitamins and minerals, extra. Um, the eggshells is very rich in calcium, the banana is rich in potassium and magnesium, the cabbage in vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin K, um, which is given back to your plants. So just an extra little tip in there. Instead of just throwing stuff away, when we can reuse it for something else and beneficial for your plants. And as you can see, I went ahead and added the rest of the cabbage to the pot. And I have the lid on because it's just going to steadily cook down and get smaller and smaller. The lid will be down in the pot before you know it. So we're just going to put that lid on and we're going to cook it until it starts just getting real soft and then we can mix in the meat and everything that's down in the bottom. Stir it up real good. I'm going to add some seasonings once it's pressed down some. That way I don't have seasonings flying all over everything else and it's easy to mix up. It's not just sitting in one big clump on top. All right, everybody. So out of what we cooked today, we have some goodies for to share with the plants, which is our mixture here of the eggs, eggshells, excuse me, the cabbage cores and outer leaves and the banana peel so our plants gonna get some goodness from what we're doing today I'm gonna give this to one kitty cat that's inside today um, I'm gonna go ahead and cook that up for her that's our broken egg that we had from this morning and we're gonna get the cabbage for dinner tonight and the piggies are also going to get, um, didn't realize I had a little onion peel in there. The piggies are also going to get the cabbage that we cut off of there and that was down in the bottom of the sink. So everybody's going to get a little something today. All right, our cabbage is cooked down far enough that we're going to start adding our seasonings. We're going to add more. We added it to our meat mixture of the roasted garlic and herb seasoning by Weber. I just do it to how I like the taste. I don't say a tablespoon, a teaspoon, all this stuff. It's what our family likes, so season how you like whatever works best for you. And of course some black pepper. And I just use different kinds of black peppers. This is pretty good though. We're going to use some Tony's. I don't want to get too crazy with it because I don't want this cabbage to be over spicy. We're going to use more garlic powder and yes it's a lot of garlic. I use garlic, garlic, garlic. I love it. 
and I'm not using the table salt anymore that comes from the grocery stores. We have found Redmond Real Salt and we absolutely love it. I love the hickory smoke flavor one. Um, this is the smoked Redmond's. Uh, then we have, they have a chef's blend, a uh, hickory, and a cherry. But I really like the hickory for a lot of different dishes, so that's what we're going to add. So this is what it looks like. Nice and rich in color. But this is real salt. <laughs> Don't have all that high sodium and everything in there, so we'll taste it after. Uh, once it cooks down real good and see if we need to add any more but usually that should be plenty enough maybe about a teaspoon I didn't use the whole spoon so just put it however much you like you don't have to use salt at all I like salt and this one I don't have to worry about it running my blood pressure up high <laughs> I can't really show y'all because I'm holding the camera but I use the two wooden spoons, sort of like salad tongs, and I toss it around. It just makes it easier when you're dealing with this much of a quantity of cabbage in a pot to be able to stir it thoroughly. All right, as you can see, our meat and everything's mixed up pretty good. We're going to go ahead and put our lid back on and let it continue to cook down. All right, our little mixture that we're making up for our plants, we're going to just pour in here. Got a little dish set up in the sink. Get that little egg out and throw it right up there. All right, so we strained off all the um, water. So our plants have vitamin and mineral nutrient rich water that we can pour in it to help the health of our plants now you ask what are we going to do with the stuff that we drained off of it or strained off of it so glad you ask <laughs> we are going to let that cool down and that is going into the compost pile and it'll just give back to the um you know, there is still some value in there somewhere because it's organic, so it'll just give back to the earth as well. And we have our little one cooked egg for our little Gracie girl. All right, our cabbage is to the point that we can remove the lid and stir it up and check it out. Now at this stage, I add... Um, the salted sweet cream butter and I do right at half I know it's not exact y'all but I'm trying to hold the phone and cut so I add that to my mixture you do not have to add the butter I do it because I like that buttery creamy flavor mixed into that smothered southern cabbage And remember guys, we still have our onion peelings that we're going to be doing something with, but I'm not going to show that today. So be looking for the future video in the next few days of what we do with the onion peels. See, we even use up the onion peels. We don't throw them away either. Alright, remember all we added was one cup of water to the cabbage. I'm not making like a cabbage soup or you know just cooked down cabbage and water boiled cabbage and nothing like that I am making a smothered cabbage so I want to cook all the moisture content not all but most of the moisture content out we're going to start once the moisture all comes out because we're not putting the lid back on so it's going to start cooking out and then when the moisture cooks out what we're going to do is start browning you know not taking it out but start browning it in the same pan so 
looking good. A lot of the moisture is getting low. What I like to do is something my dad used to do when he was alive. He would take at this stage all the excess moisture and pour it in a cup, add some more garlic powder to it, and drink it. Super healthy, extra vitamins, nutrients. It's just an extra little treat, and it's really good. And, guys, like I like to tell everybody, um, clean up as you go, and that way you don't have so much to do after you're tired, after you've eaten dinner, and you're tired from eating already. So if you take care of most of it while you're cooking, then you don't have to worry about a big mess after the fact. And we do live in a camper for you all that don't know. And I have to keep things nice and tidy as I go because I wouldn't have room to put anything for one. But I've always cleaned as I went, but it's a good habit now that I've been in because it makes it easier doing the camper living. So I'm going to take my little wooden ladle. I'm going to scoop up the excess. And that way it helps too get the extra moisture out of there so you can saute it down more so and get that little brown around the edges of your cabbage and stuff, which makes it so good. So we have our little cup. And I'm gonna add some garlic powder and that's my special little treat and memory that I have of my dad. Now ladies, if you're cooking this, um, that little treat that I pulled out and put in that cup, you drink that up and then have the cabbage later makes extra good fuel for under the sheets if you know what I mean and I do mean blow them out the bed girls and if it's guys I guess you can do the same thing one other tip I want to give is um, if you are living in a camper and you are cooking meals or big meals or meals to put up for later um, Especially in the summertime, it gets really hot inside of a camper a lot of times because there isn't the airflow quite as good as it is in a home. So I suggest you either cook really early in the morning or really late in the evening. You do what you want, but I'm just saying to conserve energy, it's probably best to do it really early or really late. Alrighty, I revived some of the rice that I had left over from day before yesterday. I just heated up some water on the stove, made some boiling water, and just poured it over it and fluffed it around a little bit and revived it because we're going to, Dallas and I have this for lunch. So it'll stretch a little further when you eat it over rice and it's really good. And this is the finished product. This is Dallas's lunch. I'm going to have a much smaller portion. Dallas is 14. He's a teenager and he likes cabbage which is really good because he's not real crazy about a whole lot of veggies and um, this is going to be his lunch and then we're going to have it again for dinner tonight but tonight I'm going to make a side of um, baked pork chops to go with it I uh, thank y'all so much for joining me y'all have a blessed day please hit the share button share it out to your friends Hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up if you will, and comment down below what you think. Y'all have a great day. All right, everyone. I have my juices that I've poured off to water my plants. This is an olive tree. I've been growing from a little tiny baby. It's about three years old. I had three, one made it, but it's doing really well. As you can see, there's other banana peelings and peanut holes and all down in there. It just also contributes to the plant. 